given all the craziness going on with the whole COVID-19 coronavirus situation, things have been moving at like a mile a minute. And I'm a native New Yorker. I'm living here in Brooklyn. I'm really at the center of a lot of what's going on here. I live a block away from the Brooklyn Hospital Center, which has been featured in the national media for everything they're dealing with. And so I've kind of had a firsthand view of some of it with the testing centers and everything right down my block. And I've been feeling pretty stressed around it, trying to manage everything that's going on while dealing with following the news and worrying about myself and my family. And I imagine a lot of you may be in the same situation as well. So I thought it could be useful to just take a little bit of time to slow down and take a deep breath and have some tea. I'm drinking a black tea nana mint and it's pretty tasty i've got an owl mug here courtesy of my wife and so i invite you all to take a sip of tea with me and just slow down for a minute there for at least the next half hour there's no agenda nothing to do just thought we could take a moment to slow down and have a chat around what's going on so join me and there's a chat function here so feel free to just type in the chat where you're calling in from, what you're up to, and what you're drinking. So feel free to, we've got Emily here in New York City as well. Hey, Emily, welcome. Yeah, feel free to just type in there, all panelists and attendees, and let me know what's going on for you. And I'm curious if any of you might want to join me on this call and just have a chat for a couple minutes, get some questions addressed, some questions answered. We got Addie in Florida, we got Zachary in West Palm Beach. Tashana in New York City, Jaylee from LA, Mexico City, Asheville, Boston, water, not sure what water is, uh, El Paso, Florida, lots of Floridians, Dallas, Queens. Yeah, so all over, a lot of folks on the East Coast. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Thanks all for joining me again. So Cheetah, hey, so Cheetah, Alexis. Awesome. So I don't want to just lecture and blabber on it here at you for the next half hour. I'm hoping that you know, a lot of you have seen my coaching videos already on the YouTube channel. And so I was thinking rather than doing like a full on coaching session or even really talking anything else at specific right now, if any of you have questions or want to have a dialogue around any of your LSAT prep struggles, anything you're dealing with in general around this whole law school thing, that we could have a chat. So if you want to have a chat with me, just ping me here, type a, type a chat to me and I will make you a panelist. And then you could join me in a conversation here for a couple minutes. Patricia, I saw you're asking about the April LSAT being canceled. Yeah, we could talk about that too. Nice to meet you. What's going on for you these days? How are you handling the whole COVID-19 amidst all the law school stuff? Okay, I'm stressed AF because um, I'm trying to manage because I'm a teacher. So I'm trying to manage uh, teaching and studying. And it's driving me because... Um, any teacher on mine, we have more responsibilities and our students are contacting us. Like for my school system, we have to have like a Google classroom. Um, we have to have a, a platform. We have to have a Google meet. We have to have live lessons. We have to have an a equal number for them to text us and call us. And so it's a lot going on. And so I'm feeling myself kind of overwhelmed and wondering how to, you know, manage it all. Cause I feel inundated. Yeah, no, there's a lot going on. I mean, it's, you were probably already trying to deal with a lot, just balancing LSAT and your job, but now your job has suddenly become way more complicated, right? Yes, that's, yeah. And I'm just like, Phew. so when I saw your email, I was like, yes. Yeah, no, I, I hear where you're coming from. And when are you planning on taking the LSAT and going to law school? Um, well, I took it before, so I need to do it again in June. So the school told me, um, we had a talk and they were like, well... Um, the situation is that April's probably going to be canceled and the others, but we can, I want you to wait and see what's going to happen for June. So, and another thing is I'm studying for a test that may or may not happen. And that kind of freaks me out just a little bit as well. Yeah, no, it's really complicated. I'm going to have another sip of tea. I'm getting stressed I'm not, not going to lie to you about that. I'm just like, I, and I'm having to motivate myself and say, you know, it may or may not happen and still how to, I guess it's somewhere in, in my subconscious that it may, and that I'm studying for something that may or may not happen. That's so. exactly it. It's the uncertainty uh, that really uh, gets you. It's the not yeah. knowing. It's the not knowing. Yeah. So 
I get what you're coming from because I also am like, is the April L side happening? Certainly not. But is the June L side happening? Yeah. That also we don't know. So we've got to figure out how to steamroll ahead despite the uncertainty. And so that's the question is like, April, let's throw it out. June, exactly. let's throw that out too. Let's look at what is relatively more certain. Because if you can dial down the uncertainty, it removes one of the stressors. I mean, when I, I spend a lot of time designing study plans for people and uh -huh. they have a start date and an end date and you've got wiggle room, but when your target test date is uncertain itself, that mixes everything up because then you don't know when do I ramp up for the full length five section exam on test day. Yes, that's a in my situation. It's a problem. So I would say, let's just forget June. Let's write it off. <laughs> You're I, covering your mouth and I can't handle that. <laughs> what, what, what's, what's tough about that? Uh, well, because the school's like, um, they're like, well, your score is pretty, it's okay. But they were saying that um, June is going to make me a more competitive candidate. And so they were like, well, because I went ahead and told them what my score was, because I was like, I don't want to, I'm not sending this file through and wasting my time or money. Um, I'm a teacher, I don't have that to do. And so, she said to me, well, um, your current score might work, it may or may not work. So then my thoughts are, okay, I start to worry about the admissions process and what that looks like this year. Um, and wondering if, what if I'm not able to, you know, finish the June LSAT, then, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if they'll take the July LSAT or if what the applications will look like you know, if, if that increases my chances with the current score, I, it's a lot going on in my head. And then, okay, will they open up for July? What are the admissions doing? Are they slowing things down? What's going to happen with the admissions process? And what does that look like? Well, let's flip, a, let's flip it around for a second. Let's say I'm a law school. Law yeah. schools are counting on students to fill seats. And the deadlines are based on business as usual. Obviously, we're not in a business as usual situation anymore, which means they've got to change their deadlines too. They've got to extend their deadlines. If April's canceled and June is canceled, they've got to extend to July because they need you actually more than you need them. Really? Really, of course. I mean, they've got to, they've had fixed costs. They have overhead. They have bureaucracies. They've got land. They've got seats in the classroom. They've got professors. All of that has to be filled up. And so if they can't take you with a June LSAT score, that means- They've got to take you with a July LSAT score because it's not just you. It's everybody in that situation. Exactly. And then I wonder what the, you know, what, you can look. Uh, and then I wonder what the, no, huh? no. He's doing this here. Yes, he is. He's wow. doing this for free. Wow. He's doing this You just can't see him. He made me a panelist. Oh, wow. I'm doing a live chat. Bring, bring her in. Who's, who's that over there? Let's bring her into the conversation. It's my sister. I, I'm trying to turn off the grass in the background, but I don't know how to turn it off. It's all right. It's so peaceful. Hello. I'm going to go away, though. Nice Hi, to I, don't, I don't. She was saying how nice you are. Come back in. Yeah, I think it's really nice what you're doing. No, I'm just glad to help and have some tea. He lives in Brooklyn. I live oh, in Brooklyn. Awesome. He's the dad, too. I, I know. I was making my chamomile, but when you made me a panelist, I didn't want to be distracted. <laughs> Yay! No, it's all good. The grass is very peaceful. It's very serene. It's nice. It's calming me down. We don't get a lot of nature here in Brooklyn. My students laugh at me. They laugh at me when I do this. They're like, are you in the best early? But yeah, um, yeah so I, I start to worry about that. And then I start worrying to, to the July is going to be more competitive because everybody, and you know, baby, the scores are going to be based on what, on the, on the performance that day. So now I worry about, okay, what happens if they're bombarded with a bunch of students in one day? what does that look like? And would that, you know, I don't want to say a proverbial curve. What does that do for that curve in July? I'm thinking about that too, if that does happen. Yeah, well, all the scores are equated on a three-year rolling basis. And they, they test out the questions way in advance. You're not measured directly against the other people taking it on your test date. You're also compared against those from the past couple of years, really. Okay, it's a three-year rolling average. And they test out the difficulty prior okay. and they only make slight adjustments. So not a big deal. I wouldn't stress about okay. that. What about the seats though? Because I saw in the chat that somebody mentioned 
someone says they just signed up for the July asset and she's worried about the curve, but also about the, the flux of students for that exam, the influx of students of the exam. Well, the curve, like I said, I just addressed that. It's not a big deal because they're not measured against those that day specifically. That's good. That's good. Then influx of students for the July LSAT specifically. I mean, that may take time. <laughs> what, that, what that means is you just got to... <laughs> Someone's talking about the grass in the background. That's like I know. I, I know. love you. I love you, Aria. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's Aria or Aria, but I, I like clicked on a little thing in the background. Yeah, it's something Hi, in Aria. the settings. You can mess around with that. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so influx of students, that basically means that you want to book up, you want to book it early so you can get the best possible test center. OMG. That's really all it is. I mean, if it gets filled up, then you might have to travel for it. And obviously nobody's traveling these days. That's all assuming that things go back to a relative normal, at least for a little bit. Or the other thing is maybe they'll put this whole thing online. That's another thing they're looking at. We talked about that last time and I'm not comfortable with that because mm. of the cheating, the cheating, the internet. I'm sorry. I'm not comfortable with the fact that you may have somebody that looks like you taking it to this. Yeah. You're, you're evil, geni you're evil genius twin, and that's, right? That's, I don't like that. I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, so you do think so. Do, let me ask you, Steve, do you think the July LSAT is actually uh, a possibility? It's a lot more possible than June. I mean, I would put June at like 50 50 at best. And I would say that's much more likely to be online than in person because if you think about it, if you're tracking the news, like I am at least, like I mean, yes. California and Virginia both have stay at home till June 10th. Uh huh. The June LSAT is June 8th. So how can you have the LSAT in person if you're, there's a stay at home order in that state? You can't. You can't. And they can't, can't, they can't do it in some states, but not others. That wouldn't be quite fair. Exactly. And it's not, it's not only going to be California and Virginia, right? I mean, a lot of other states are going to fall into line with that too as things get worse in their part of the neck of the woods, you know? Someone wants to know when they're going to announce the status of the April LSAT. So they have set the target deadline for them at April 10th, meaning they're going to make a decision by April 10th. Maybe they'll let us know sooner. Hard to say. We don't know, but it's looking like it's not going to happen based on all the information out there. I mean, I think even New York just announced they're extending till April 29th, I think, April 30th, thereabouts. Yeah, Cuomo said April 27th. That's what I was talking about. So April can't happen in that situation. Oh, it doesn't so, get I mean, I just don't see how they could do it in some states, but not others. And then those who are in the affected states, I mean, New York and California, two of the most populous states in the country, where the, those people can't travel elsewhere. That's, and it would that's true. be a pretty uneven playing field. So I honestly don't know how they could possibly do it unless they do it online. So you think July is going to be online? I think July is more likely to happen in person or online than anything else. I think oh. April and June, April's not going to happen, period. Maybe LSAC will get it together for online by June. If not by June, then by July. Uh, they said uh, some, uh, uh, is it area? I don't know if it's area, area. She wants to know what kind of law someone should uh, practice because she likes to have a plan. Someone uh, uh, dealing with global health issues. That is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Absolutely brilliant. It's going to be a big practice area. Oh, yes. And then she wants to know, like, who is liable when a person boards a plane and puts others at risk? Oh, this is good. What kind of finalization would that be? And Honestly, keep, I don't know if it, enough about it, but that's a good question. Uh, Let's tackle Jackson that one first, then get to the next yeah. one. Okay. I mean, I'm not a medical expert or anything. I'm sure there's areas of law that cover it. I would just contact law schools and see what classes they're offering in these areas. I mean, 1L, you don't really specialize in anything anyway. So, but I think with time, you could definitely do some research there. And someone else looking into JDMPH, that definitely seems pretty relevant to me. And we've got some other folks here who raised their hands and wanted to jump on the call. So Crystal, if you don't have any other questions, do you mind if I put someone else in the seat there? No, that was fun. Everybody deserves a chance. I Definitely, like this. Is fun. This is All fun. Right. Thanks for joining. Thanks for the awesome background. <laughs> All right. I'll see you later. Bye, Crystal. Bye, guys. Thanks for joining me. All right. Let's see. Zach, you want to Zach, you want to join me here? Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm good, Zach. How you doing? Doing well, doing well. Um, yeah, basically what, uh, what Crystal was saying regarding a lot of the, the skepticism regarding the LSAT dates are some of the concerns that I have as well. I've been planning for August 29th, just started studying about two, three weeks ago for this August 29th date. And what I'm worried about is what the same concerns are for the July test. Like, let's say the July test does get canceled. Let's say this thing rolls out for the rest of summer. and 
everyone now is flooding the August 29th, uh, the August 29th test. What type of concerns that brings up in terms of space availability? Um, you know, I go to school at Florida State University, which there's only one testing center in Tallahassee. And aside from that, the nearest one is 67 miles away. So that really brings up a concern of, you know, traveling to take this test. Yeah, no, I hear where you're coming from. I mean, this is, tra people travel for the LSAT all the time because they never book enough testing centers or enough seats. So if you don't book relatively early, you might have to travel for it. You, a lot of people will travel back to their parents and take it in their hometown if they can't do it where they've moved to or where their college campus is. So that's not really a new concern. I think the issue here is if COVID's going on, you can't really travel based on your own personal health concerns or the local laws or regulations that are going on at the moment. Exactly. So, Honestly, I realistically, I don't see LSAC putting the test online. Um, but uh, negating that, a lot of people didn't see AP putting their tests online. Uh, so that kind of brings into a concern a slim to none chance they change the format, but what if they change the format to, uh, to allow for the real, most realistic possibility of taking a test online? Or you look back at law schools for kids that are taking the June LSAT that can't anymore, they may, maybe taking something with the GRE, maybe saying, hey, uh, we will accept GREs. Uh, a lot of law schools do accept GREs, uh, with sure. LSAT, but I'm saying maybe working somewhere with the GRE where a GRE can be taken online so that all these law students that need to take the LSAT for admission will have to take the GRE instead, which, which would throw a wrench in the system for a lot of people. Yeah, well, they have moved the GRE online, by the way, and so LSAC has massive incentive to move the LSAT online sooner rather than later because they've got to compete. If COVID extends into the summer and people can't take the LSAT in, in any in-person testing centers, GRE's got a massive leg up and schools, law schools need to fill their seats with some valid and reliable test to use the ABA's terminology for this. Unless the ABA removes that ruling, in which case law schools could take people without any test at all, period. If LSAT can't step up, it's going to be the GRE. So I think LSAC has already done a lot of the legwork to bring it online by making it digital. They're halfway there. They've just got to administer it over the internet and have remote proctoring, which GR, the GRE does. ETS, which administers the, the, um, the SAT and the advanced placement exams and the GRE, they've got a company called ProctorU that they've contracted to provide that remote proctoring where they monitor you with a webcam and a mic for security purposes, kind of similar to what they do for the LSAT writing sample. So it theoretically could be done. The question is obviously, what happens if the internet glitches and the fact that they can't administer the LSAT every single day the way they can the GRE because they have a much more limited pool of questions. So from your perspective, though, that would only mean you're doing it on a tablet at home, I would imagine, rather than doing it on a tablet at the test center. So if anything, that could be good because you don't have the physical proctors circling around. You don't have the stress of going into a test center. You don't have the person next to you sniffling or coughing, which normally would be only a little bit distracting. Now you're worried you're going to catch the plague from them, right? So I think it's a much better situation if you could do it in the comfort of your own home, ideally. And I can't imagine, COVID or not, that 50 years from now, do you think you're going to be going to a testing center? I don't, I don't think so. I think 50 years from now, you could do it on your phone from the subway. I don't see why it's going to be in person down the line, just with all the logistical issues around either a, a pandemic like now, or just the fact that people are scattered around the world. Do there are people who have to fly from one country to another just to take the LSAT at the moment? Exactly. Um, and I do believe that disparity is something that eventually will get solved, whether that be through adding more test centers, which honestly, that isn't a realistic solution given the fact that LSAT is a widely regarded North American test. Um, and the idea that uh, people taking it online, you know, there it, it's common knowledge that it's widely skeptic of cheating. But I think with a regarded proctor system, I think that a lot of people are staying true to 
true to the ethics of test taking, which kind of makes me think that LSAC is waiting so long to make this announcement. There could be something in the works where it becomes an online test using ProctorU. Maybe that's why they're waiting so long. Uh, I would love to give them the benefit of the doubt on that one. I think given though how long they waited to announce March, that they're waiting for April just because they're holding out hope beyond hope just to see what happens. Although obviously to everyone else, it is readily apparent that given all the state-by-state regulations and limits with the stay-at-home, there's no way it's happening. And they also couldn't possibly get an online LSAT together by April 25th. I mean, look how long it took them to do a digital LSAT. And then when that rolled out, it was a disaster, at least oh, in that, July. That was, it was a mess. If anyone listening here was following what happened last year when they released it in July, tons of tech glitches in July, tons in September. It took them a long time to figure that out. And that's when they had a physical proctor on site and they had a local system set up at each test center with a hub. But everyone, everyone doing it remotely, there's still tons of issues with the writing sample. So I don't see how it could possibly happen by April. Maybe by June, much more likely for July. Yeah. Um, other than that, just thank you so much for having for having this sort of open forum where we can just chat and just, you know, take this stress free. Um, I really do like this idea and I hope that uh, as this situation moves on, uh, these kind of open forums can appear more frequently. Totally. No, this is a lot of fun. Thank you for joining me and thanks everyone for joining as well. I'm going to have another sip of tea. Thank you. Sure. Let's see if we could bring in one more person before we start the next session here. We got some folks here. Let's see who have we got here. Hey, Tequila, what's happening? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, I had a couple of questions. So um, personally for me, I was applying to schools that had later admission deadlines. They had deadlines around like June um, and April. Now with the cancellation of the test and with them moving deadlines back to June or July and we us not knowing the status of the test, what do you think would be best? Do you think it would be best to maybe take a gap year and maybe apply for the next cycle? Um, or just kind of wait it out and kind of see what LSAC is going to do with this next test? Depends how much in a hurry you are. I mean, we've been talking a lot about uncertainty tonight, right? And it could be stressful to be studying for this, not knowing when you're going to take it. So to have a hard deadline in mind where you know you're taking it no matter what, that could be motivating. I personally find that motivated. If I know I have a deadline, like I was, I've been wanting to do this tea with LSAT Steve for the past like week or so. And I was like, I typically record on Mondays anyway. So I was like, let me just set it for Monday and make it happen. And that way I knew I could work towards it. And with the LSAT, I think it's kind of similar. Even if that date's a year away, you can take that step-by-step approach, knowing you're getting there with the test, like the practice test lead up to that. So I think that could be nice. If you're that kind of person, and that means waiting a year, then wait a year. Get the highest LSAT score possible, no matter what it takes. Alternatively, you could go for August or November. Assuming things are back to normal by November, you could take it in November and still apply in the fall to start fall 21. Okay. Now, what are your goals in terms of starting law school? When do you want to start? I wanted to start in the fall. I wanted to actually this start. This fall? Well, yeah. That was my goal. Um, I take and I take a, I've taken the LSAT once before, just kind of as a practice, just kind of see where I was, and I canceled my scores, and I planned on taking the March one um, just to give myself a little bit more longer, longer time to study because the school that I actually want to go to, their deadline's not until May. So I knew I had, a, you know, I had enough time to retake the test, but now that um, – Corona has hit. I don't know. It's like you see, like we've been talking about, there's a lot of uncertainty going on. So I really don't know what to do or how to approach it. Should I wait a year? Should I not wait a year? Because it's a lot of uncertainty. We don't know what's going to happen next month or six months from now with this virus. So it's kind of just playing everything by ear day by day. Yeah, totally. Totally. No, I mean, we know that April's not going to happen. We know June almost certainly is not going to happen, or at least it's 50 50 at best. And there's the whole ambiguity around online. Will it be online or not? LSAC likes to announce these things far in advance. But Things are also accelerating really fast due to Corona. So hard to say. I would, put, I would aim for July at the earliest. Like anyone who's going to work with me, I'm telling them, don't even think about June because it's too uncertain. And that mm-hmm. leads to a lot of stress. But July, we could put that at the odds right now. I th- I'd say maybe 75% it's going to happen for July, 50-50 for June. And then August becomes more likely. You know, October becomes more likely. So that's good stuff. You know, I think that July or August, I would aim for that. And then we'll see what happens moving forward. We got our next panelist here. So Professor Campos is going to join us. So if you don't mind, Tequila, I appreciate your joining. And thank you. see you in the chat. Hey, Kim, what's going on? Hi, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I can hear you okay. If you want to turn on your camera, feel free. Don't laugh, okay? 
All right, no laughing. I promise I won't laugh. <laughs> All right, hey, no, you're looking good. What's going on? <laughs> okay, so let me make this larger. Okay, so my question is, I'm not um, like ready to take the LSAT like tomorrow or anything or the next six months. I just graduated from um, Queens College, political science. So what happened was um, I took like a pre-LSAT course, a diagnostic rather, through yeah. capital just to test yourself so my professor at the time I just graduated in January and he was saying that um well, just tilt your camera down a little bit the angles a little off oh down yeah perfect yeah Play? yeah awesome you're good okay they were saying uh, he was saying to take a diagnostic so I don't know where I'm at so I took the diagnostic test he told me that I, I received my score was 145 and um he told me that was good for somebody that never took an LSAT, never looked at a book or anything, because I'm not really used to this, like, you know. <laughs> so he was saying that if I were to study, if being that I got a 145, that would work out. So I just wanted to know if that was, like, accurate. Yeah, I mean, 145 is a great starting point. And you can only go up from there. There's, I mean, I've seen 20-point increases. I've seen even more than that at times. It takes a tremendous amount of work, but... You can get there if you put in the time, as Professor Campos was saying, and as I always say, this test is learnable. It's not an intelligence test. It's not a measure of who you are. The fact that you can improve on it significantly mm -hmm. just shows that it is learnable. I mean, I've got tons of people who've improved their scores significantly, and I've got them actually chronicled in the LSAT diaries where students wrote in their experiences studying for the LSAT. I'm putting the link in the chat here right now. People okay. have improved 15, 20 points or more. Obviously, the more you put into this, the more you get out of it. And so mm -hmm. a lot of folks want to do only two to three months. In my opinion, from my experience, that's not enough to achieve your fullest potential. I recommend five to six months if you can. But well, I was that, thinking more so a year. I mean, a year even better. I mean, it took me a year, but I ultimately ended up with a 175. So it was definitely oh, worth, it was worth it in my case. <laughs> yeah, I mean, thanks. I mean, I started in the low 150s and it was, it was really brutal at times, to be honest. And I questioned myself a lot along the way. But now that everyone's living under quarantine life, or at least most people I encounter these days, I mean, you've got, in most cases, you have a lot less going on. Obviously, socializing is out the window unless you're doing right. Zoom calls like this, right? I mean, this is really the only way most of us can connect right now, right. other than That's social true. media and FaceTime and such. And so if you have more free time, Mm -hmm. then take advantage of it. You know, this could be the push that everyone needs to yeah, get their LSAT true. done. And the fact but that... The is, but here's the thing, is that all I need to know is what do they want me to know to pass the test? Because I can read plain English, I can answer A, B, C, or D, but the way the terminology is, is um, written out it's not something that you just look at and be like, oh, okay, oh, yes, B. You know what I mean? They really want you to think about something, but the thing is, I don't know really what they want me to think about. So if they say the weakest or the strongest, I get that. But then based on my opinion and how I live in my life might be different from yours, so you might think this is the weakest for you when this is the weakest for me. So I don't really know what their culture, and when I say culture, I'm talking about a way of doing things and the way of writing the test. I don't know what their culture um, expects. You know, that's the part where I'm having a problem. I get what you mean. They speak on a whole nother level on the LSAT. It's like a foreign language. I'm thinking of like <laughs> in the movie 2001, they've got the big obelisk and they're trying to interpret what it means. Mm-hmm. And so it's like they're speaking to us in code and we've got to interpret that code like the Rosetta right. Stone, right? You have to break right. it down and they don't speak to us directly. I mean, if you look at LSAT super prep, when they're trying to explain the LSAT, in a lot of times it's just as confusing, right? I mean, right. the way they talk about it. Exactly. I had a couple of discussions with a guy who used to write actual LSAT questions. They're on the YouTube channel where we actually have discussions with this guy and the way he talks, it's like an LSAT question. And so the more time you can spend learning their way of analyzing things, so read right. it. I, I'm, I'm making fun of super prep, but also read it. 
because they're telling you how they think about the test. My discussions with the former LSAT question writer, he's telling us how he thinks about the test. And then you've got nearly 100 released exams where they're speaking to us in code and we've got to dissect it and analyze it. Right. You don't have to do 100 of them, but the more that you look at, the more you expose yourself to that, the more you're going to get a sense of what it is that they're driving at. And you'll see that the topic never matters. The underlying structure is what matters. But over time, you will get a better sense of what those hidden patterns are. You will start to see and recognize oh, see. the patterns. This exam, oh, this so exam is a test reading. of pattern recognition. Exactly. So just keep reading, they keep looking, and then as things will grab out, you know, come out, right? Exactly. Like, just immerse yourself in this. Okay, I see what you're saying. And All you've right. got a year, so you have plenty of time. <laughs> you've got plenty of time. Right, exactly. You don't Thanks. have to do, of course, and you don't have to do every single LSAT exam ever released. That might be too much. I'd rather you do the most recent half in depth. Little by little each day, because you sit down and it's too long, it gets frustrating, you know? Exactly, exactly. But don't use the explanations as a crutch. First, analyze on your own. I see some folks oh, okay. in the chat are talking about study groups. And so I would say, get oh, together with other people. Articulate mm -hmm. this. Don't just look at the answer key or look at an explanation and say, I get it now. Slow down, interpret it on your own first. Then explain it to your study buddy. Explain it to a coach or a tutor or your remote study group and have a dialogue about these things. Read the question and then explain to somebody else without looking at the question itself to right. prove that you truly understand the method of reasoning and what they were driving at. Okay. And then out of the group, somebody obviously has to end up knowing what they're talking about if they're continuously getting the right answer, right? Exactly. And that person can explain it to the other. They have different views. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like, let's say one person in the group is better at games. Another is better at logical oh, reasoning. I you have see. like your logical okay. reasoning person help everybody else with the reasoning. You have your games person help everybody else with the games and you learn from each other and you also learn by teaching it. So whatever you, you're good at, yeah. you explain to somebody else, okay. you're still getting value out of that too. And I'm getting too excited. So I got to slow down and take some tea. Excuse me. No. <laughs> but yeah, so we got study groups. They're a great resource. Definitely take advantage of this. Tashana is talking about forming an in-person one in New York once the pandemic okay. is over. So anybody in New York, hit up Tashana for getting together for in-person. But for yeah, now, that. anybody who wants to connect with Kim, just type in the chat. And we got the LSAT Unplugged Facebook group where people can come post in there as well and connect with everybody. So go over to the LSAT Unplugged Facebook group after this. Type that you're looking for a study okay. group and everybody can connect and form, form some meetings over there. Oh, okay, good. Kim, I want to make sure everybody has some time to connect with me who wants to. So if okay. you have other questions, I'll let you sign off for now. And Thank we'll you. Hey, Jasmine, what's going on? Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah, you're good. You're good. What's happening? Um, well, I was signed up for March. That got canceled. And then now I'm into April. So that's pending, right? I'm like constantly checking the LSAC website for like that date when it's updated to change. But so far, it's still at April 1st. Um, so I guess like a question I, I, that I had was like, what were some, what are some of the challenges that Elsa has to kind of, um, work out for the test to go online? That's a great question. Well, as somebody mentioned earlier, there's security, right? So the fact that somebody could hack into something somewhere potentially, or that somebody could take it for you. Like if they put up their, if they get a fake ID or something and hold that up, or somebody who looks like you could take it for you potentially, I could see that being one issue. There's also the fact of administering it simultaneously across the world potentially. So right now it's really only been like East Coast to Hawaii, which is a significant time difference, but maybe not enough for people to share answers or share enough testing content potentially. But if you administer it globally, at the same time, you also have the issue of somebody taking it, having to take it in the middle of the night if they're going to use the same test form. Right. I wasn't like really aware of that, at least for just like the way things have been going for the LSAT, like digital wise or even like on paper. Are like administrations of the LSAT, like they all happen at once across like different states with like the same like sorts of like same like versions or sets of versions of LSATs to be distributed? No, they haven't actually. So they've done it at the same time locally across the, across the U.S. 
And then they have it on a different date with a different test form for international students. So those taking it in Asia or taking it in Africa or the Middle East or Europe, they're typically taking it on a different date with a completely different set of questions. Right. And so the point of that would be because like they only have like a certain number of LSATs to give people to take. And so that'd be kind of like the reasoning, right? For that. Exactly. So that's the issue. And that's where LSAC has a bit of trouble with competition from the GRE because the GRE it's, they have a much larger pool of potential questions they could ask. I mean, with math, for example, they can swap the numbers and make a new problem. They have a huge list of vocabulary words they could pull from. But with the LSAT, a lot more work goes into creating and validating a single question. And so that's why they've traditionally only administered it four times per year and only released three of those test forms. And even when they have recently increased it to offering the LSAT nine or 10 times per year, they've still only been releasing three test forms and the others they're saving in the bank for future reuse. But they couldn't do the LSAT every single day the way the GRE is because they just don't have enough test forms. They'd be reusing things too much. And that's part of why they introduced those new LSAT retake limits because they don't want somebody to run into the same problems multiple times. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you think LSAC would have the capability of like distributing tablets to all LSAT t test takers? Because Absolutely I'm, not. <laughs> no, I'm no way. Like even now, like for me practicing for the digital test, I've been using like my computer. It's not exactly the same experience, but it's closer than pen and paper, I'd say. Um, but yeah, that's something that I kind of foresee in terms of like them distributing. If it's going to be online, then is it going to be like on the tablet or are we going to be doing it on our own computers? What happens if we don't have tablets? That's kind of why I've been using my computer. So. That's a big question. That's a big question. You're absolutely right. I mean, it's hard enough for people as it is at the moment. Those who have tablets have a relative advantage to those who don't in terms of preparing for and simulating a tablet administered LSAT. And so that's been an equity issue where some have it, some don't. Obviously, there's a financial component there as well. And I've been telling people, borrow one or buy one and then later return it if you can, like an Amazon Fire is one option. I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you only prep for the digital tablet LSAT on a computer because you're not getting the full experience with the touchscreen. Mm -hmm. So I'd say borrow one if you can. Obviously, borrowing is tougher now given social isolation and distancing and quarantine and all that, right? Right, right. Um, okay. So I guess like my last question is like, if the LSAT were to move online, how soon do you think LSAC would give specific instruction about it before the next um, LSAT test date? Or do you think um, there'll be like a window of time where people can contribute like ideas as to like how this would be best be um, like done at home? Or would there be anything to it for the first one first kind of official one to be given at home where like there'd be more leeway or in any kind of shape or form? Well, I think if you have strong opinions on this, you should definitely email LSAC. They have shown that in the past, if enough people want something, they are susceptible to public pressure to some extent to make things more student friendly. And I think with the recent change in leadership with Kelly Testy in charge now, they have been more receptive and more student friendly. Obviously, things have not been perfect in the past year, but they are trying to be more responsive and being better with varying degrees of success. Mm -hmm. As far as when they will announce if it goes online, they typically have wanted to give lots of notice, like they gave plenty of notice moving to a digital format, for example. For it to move online though, they've got to do it pretty quickly if it's going to happen. Like I said earlier, to have to face competition from the GRE. My suspicion is that July or June will be the earliest it'll be online and they will announce it as soon as they are reasonably confident that they can pull it off. So I'm leaning more towards July happening for online than for June to happen online, but they'll have to give you at least a month, I would hope, preferably more time than that. But as we know right now with the April LSAT, they're not giving too much notice about canceling that. They're seem, they seem to be holding to that April 10th deadline, and we're already at the 6th now, so that would be, what, Friday, right? Where you should be hearing on that. As far as the question of administering it digitally, as administering it online on tablet versus computer, I'm not really sure what they'll do with it, honestly. I think 
they can't make it only tablet because not enough folks have tablets. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe so they'll the, let you do either way. So the pressure for LSAC to cancel like March and April is from the states, right? I mean, that's from stay-at-home orders at the very least. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, that, that's all my questions. Thank you so much for the blog. Like, I'm following it religiously. <laughs> awesome, Jasmine. Thanks for joining us. And thanks to everybody for joining tonight. You've all asked fantastic questions. I've really enjoyed having this tea time with you all. And I want to have a final sip of tea with everyone before we sign off. And this was a lot of fun. I want to do this with you all again really soon. So keep an eye out. I'll be posting about the next one shortly. Thanks again, everyone. Have a good night. Stay safe out there and keep in touch. Thank you. Good night. Night all. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.